Hi, I'm Andrew. Today I would like to teach you how to use the graph to write an equation for the rational function. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to focus on the intercepts. All right, there's really two things though that we got to focus on, intercepts and asymptotes. The first thing is going to be the intercepts. So we've got two types of intercepts, right, x and y intercepts. So remember the x-intercepts are where the function crosses that x-axis. All right, so it crosses that x equals 2. So x equals 2, and it also crosses it at x equals 3. So we're going to have two x-intercepts. All right, and we should probably just write the coordinates. So it'd be 3 comma 0 and 2 comma 0. All right, actually, not 3, negative 3. Oops, almost made a silly mistake. Um, next is the y-intercept. So the function only crosses the x-axis in one spot, and it's going to be uh, at 2. So that's going to be the y-intercept. So we can label that as 0, 0 comma 2. All right. Next thing is to take into account the asymptotes. Now, most notably, we want to focus on the vertical asymptotes. All right. It also turns out that in this problem, there is a horizontal asymptote. You might have noticed it. You know, it, it's somewhere around here or so. But we don't have to worry about it. It's not going to help us All right, write the equation. So we're just going to focus on the vertical asymptote. Now, the vertical asymptote here is going to be x equaling 1. Remember, anytime you have a vertical line, it's always x equaling some number. All right, so we have a vertical asymptote now, a vertical asymptote at x being equal to 1. So we kind of have everything we need all right, to write the function. So remember, a rational function is simply going to be some polynomial function in the numerator, call it g of x, divided by some polynomial function in the denominator, call it h of x. It does not matter. The first thing I like to do is I like to start with the denominator, okay? That's where the vertical asymptotes are going to, I almost forgot how to say, I almost forgot what VA stood for, vertical asymptotes. Um, we have to focus on the vertical asymptotes, all right? Now, there's only one in this problem, and that's fine. So the vertical asymptote indicates an x value that is just not possible for the function to obtain. In other words, the only, the only thing that's going to cause this whole thing to do something wacky is if I plug in a zero down there, right? If there's a zero down there, that's a problem because you can't divide by zero. It's going to give some undefined result. Okay, watch. Do five divided by zero in the calculator. Watch what's going to happen. It's going to yell at you, right? We don't want the calculator to yell at you. So we cannot divide by zero, all right? So that's what I'm looking to do now. Whoops. That's what I'm looking to do over here. I'm looking to figure out now, x cannot be one because there's a vertical asymptote there. So the way I'm going to write it then is I'm going to write x minus 1. In other words, if x if if there is a vertical asymptote at x equals 1, then I know that x cannot be 1. And if I plug in 1 then here for this expression I made, it goes to 0. That's the whole idea. We've got to produce a 0 result in the denominator when x is 1. All right, so we create a simple factor from that. Then we're going to turn our attention. And if you had two vertical asymptotes, you would have done the same thing. Just write another factor. Multiply down there. Now we're going to turn our attention to the x-intercepts. There's two. There are two. All right, at 2 and negative 3. Now it's the same thing. Remember, this is telling us that the function's value is going to be 0 when x is equal to 2. So what does that mean? Well, that must mean that 0 results in the numerator because 0 divided by anything becomes 0. So I wound up using the same methodology with the x-intercepts to now find the polynomial function of the numerator. All right, so x, when x is 2, the function has to be 0. In other words, this expression I'm going to write must go to 0, must become 0. Then I'm going to write that as write x minus 2. Because if I plug in a positive 2 there for x, and you subtract 2, you get a 0. All right? And then the next one's going to be x plus 3. So you might notice a pattern now. You can basically take those values and just switch the sign. Now, last but not least, we're going to turn our attention to the y-intercept. Oh, we saved that one for last. The y-intercept telling us that the function's value is going to be 0, oh, excuse me, the function's value is going to be 2, all right, that's the y value, that's the function's value, when the x value is 0, all right? So what you can do is you can plug 2 in for the function's value, and then everywhere you have an x, you're going to plug in a 0. So 0 minus 2, 0 plus 3, all right, and then all over now, uh, 0 minus 1. Now the problem is this equation is not going to work. Right? If you do the math now, this is just a multiplication, so that's a minus 6. Denominator is a minus 1, and you're like, wait, 2 equals 6? Huh? No, it doesn't equal, right? So what that means is that there must be some coefficient here. There must be some constant that's being multiplied by this rational function in order to make this work out. Okay, so the whole goal is now to solve that for the constant, that's c. 
Okay, it's being multiplied by the 6. So now all you have to do basically is just divide both sides by 6, and C will equal then 1 third, right, or 2 sixths. So now that's our C value. So you can go back to here, do a little erase, and just simply write 1 third, and you're done. That's the formula, okay? If you wanted to clean up the top by foiling it, you know, making it into a quadratic with an x squared leading coefficient, that's great. Remember, the trick is to just add these two values, all right, which is a positive 1, and then just shove an x onto it, and then multiply them, which would be a negative 6. All right, so I'm just going to write that out quickly. So it's going to be uh, x squared plus x minus 6. Okay, and you can get rid of the parentheses in the denominator. You don't really need them. And that's it. That would then be the answer. Now, you should always check yourself. So you can go to your calculator, hit y equals. Now do 1 divided by 3, okay, times. I'm going to double parenthesis this. Actually, oh, I hit a division symbol. Be careful. Times. Do I need a double parenthesis? No, I really don't. So I'll do one parenthesis. So there's going to be x squared, okay, x squared plus x minus 6. Close the parenthesis, then divide it by... Now you do need the parenthesis here. If you if you don't have a if you don't use the parenthesis, it's not going to come out right. The calculator is not going to know that you want to take all of x minus one and divide it into all of this. If you don't have that parenthesis there, what it's going to do? It's going to take x, divide it into this whole thing, and then subtract one from that result. All right, but let's hit graph. No, is that is it is that the same as no? That's all there is to it, ladies and gentlemen. Notice the intercepts, right? Two, and we got negative three and two. Everything looks good. We got that vertical asymptote right at x is equal to one. It's a beautiful thing, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. I do hope this video helped. And if it did, like, subscribe, maybe even tell some of your classmates. We love to help you with more stuff. That's why we have thousands of videos on our channel, not only dedicated to math, but chemistry and physics as well. And we have a whole lot of stuff coming. Take care.